cheers good evening hello beautiful people I am coming to you live with a tutorial but why does that happen every time <laughs> based on a picture of Charlize Theron hey Amy Jo uh, where have you been um, okay so this is my inspiration picture and I posted it online so if you'll look closely at it there's some very interesting elements to her eye makeup um, if you get right up close so I tried to kind of copy the hair mine's not quite as full as hers or uh, as professionally done because I didn't take the time to do a pro job um, but I am going to show you all a little hair trick that I'm excited to share with you um, to try to get mine to look just a little bit more like hers and the color just a little bit better and then she's also not wearing earrings in the picture which let's be honest that was just a complete mistake um i know they really need me on these sets when they do these things and i could point out all of these flaws hey deborah oh i so miss you nicole hi director twin i know we're January director twins. I'm just proud of the fact that I made director in January. I mean that that is a jacked up month. Okay, hair tip powder. You can use baby powder. This is some old Ben Nye. FYI, this does not work with Limelight Foundation. Don't use this. Don't try to set your makeup with this. If you don't have any of our setting powder, use baby powder before you use this. But I just put a little bit on this uh, brush. I'm going to brush this into my roots and it's going to make them look a lot lighter. Getting my hair done hopefully next Tuesday. Waiting for confirmation on that. And this is a super quick fix when you're going out and you don't have your roots done yet. Huge, huge difference. You can spend quite a bit of time and get, you know, all in there, but if you're having photos made or you're going to an event, what's really going to make a difference in your pictures is what's right by your face. Dark finds dark and light finds light. So you want as much light bouncing off of your face as possible. Um, need a little bit more right there, that ear hair. This is kind of a messy job. And if it looks streaky, just pat it till it looks better. All right, so this should be a little fuller right here, but don't have time to mess with that. Okay, so how are y'all doing tonight? Is everybody good? Why not Ben Nye? Um, okay, so I don't know exactly, except that I used this once um, when I had let somebody else borrow my setting powder and it, I don't know if the uh, processing of the powder is different, but it it made the foundation cake and crack um, severely. I mean, it was it was really really bad. So um, I don't ever sell the foundation without our setting powder. Um, if we're out of it, I recommend that people just use a tiny bit of baby powder, like put it on a tissue, and then tap your brush on the tissue, and then you know take it off just the tiniest little bit that'll do um, a fine job until you can get our setting powder which will do a much prettier job of creating kind of a veil um, but yeah no bin nye and I even have an old Laura Mercier um, really fine pressed powder but I've been so hesitant to use it because um, I know that our products just work really well together and I don't want to screw up my face um, okay so we are going to get started with primer. This is going to give me some moisture back in my skin. Um, if you're putting on your foundation right after you put um, like a lotiony moisturizer on and you have even moderately oily skin, you could have um, a problem with it just not adhering well. Our foundation does not absorb into your skin. It stays on top, but in such a um, 
such a thin and perfect layer that um, you have to just be very careful what you set it with and what's what you're applying it on top of. So, uh, so if your face is kind of greasy or um, too moisturized, um, it can kind of slip and slide and you won't have the coverage that you want. Um, that's one of the um, errors that uh, people have sometimes when they get our foundation and they're like I don't know this isn't as magical as when you put it on yourself that's often the case is that they've just put moisturizer on our primer spray will basically unless your skin is super super dry and mine's pretty dry um, this will avoid you needing to use a moisturizer and you can just spray this on first and that's going to prime your skin for acceptance of the foundation Sounds very sciencey and very smart like that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna use this brush that I love so much. It's our number five brush. It's called the Buffer Brush, and I'm gonna use this with the foundation um, in shades Ivory and Shinto Two. There they are, right there. If you're wondering what shade you should get, you should get Ivory and Shinto Two. How do I know? I don't know you. What if your skin's not the same? It works on every Caucasian face um, with very, very, very few um, exceptions. So um, you may be a little bit more ivory and a tiny bit of Shinto. You may be more Shinto and a tiny bit ivory. You may be exactly the same um, of both. They're the same amount of both. But what you are going to get when you buy two foundations is twice the product, obviously. And you're also um, going to have a guaranteed perfect match um, as well as the ability to flex your shade based on the season and also based on um, whether or not you're mixing the product with something else like sometimes I'll mix this with our one drop wonder to get sort of a lighter um, more tinted moisturizer look and in that case I want a darker shade than the one I have so flexibility flexibility also build your confidence brush makeup little roundy round roundy round very little pressure okay you shouldn't really be able to see it on the brush you can always go back and add more if you get it on and you go whoa that's way too dark no problem because it's not absorbing into your skin it's not set until you set it you can just add a little bit of the lighter shade on top of it so it's really kind of fun to play with and it takes all the guesswork out there's no chance you're gonna get this and then be like oh, it's not the right shade or it's so close it's so close nope you've got you you can mix it Yes, the expense is there, but I promise you, you have spent more buying five $18 foundations than you would if you just bought two really darn good ones. And that's just a secret that makeup artists know. We, we use the same darn colors on just about every single person. Cosmetic companies want you to think that everything is, you know, there has to be a perfect color and a perfect formula just for you not true and every pro artist knows it some of them won't admit it <laughs> but deep down they know it all right so I'm just making little circles and this brush is one of several that I use for applying foundation the one that you saw me use the, the classic foundation brush this guy right here never ever never ever use this with our foundation I'm not saying it can't be used. I'm saying that you should not, and there are much better choices. You are going to spend way more time trying to get a flawless finish with that other brush. Um, and if you don't have the finesse, you may never get there, and then you'll decide that it's the foundation. You're not realizing that it's just your brush. So, listen to me, children. Grasshoppers. Okay, so in the picture, she doesn't have a very heavy look, but she is bounced with quite a bit of light off of her face. So to recreate that, I'm gonna do some pretty heavy concealer. And I'm going to use concealer number zero. Again, this is the only concealer that you need if you are Caucasian. And even my daughter, who is mixed 
um, we use this one because it blends in with the foundation. So this is going to mix with your foundation um, that's already on your face and they blend beautifully together. Please don't cheap out and think that you're going to get the foundation and use your old concealer. A real good chance that that is not going to work out well for you. Our foundation and our concealer are wax based. There's nothing else out on the market like that. There might be a handful of things that would actually blend well, but they are not going to be ideal. Okay, you see how I am going through this whole area all the way down to the nostril. This whole area needs to be enough shades lighter that you think you've done it wrong. Because really, I mean, if you looked at me, if you're just tuning in right now and you saw this, wouldn't you be like, yep, mm -mm, that's not right. But it is. And if you never take it this far, you'll never know how good it could be. All right, so pat and pull. Don't do this and don't stay just in this area right here. I'm not doing this because my face is so unique. Everyone needs to do this. The same color here as here. Got it? All right, so a little bit on the bridge of the nose and a little bit on the cupid's bow. Let's look at my picture. She's got quite a bit right here. A little bit on the forehead. Brighten that up. And that's exactly what it should look like if you've done it well. It should look just a little off, like mm, I'm pretty sure I need to keep blending and blending and blending. Save all of your extra blending for your eyeshadow because your face is going to be amazing without, where to go, where to go? Can't see. Okay. Um, without a ton of blending. I mean, you want this blended in, don't get me wrong, but you want it to be light enough that you, you're not trying to press it in and basically make it go away. You want to change the color of your skin and make it better. Where is my tapered brush that I just had in my hand? Oh, y'all. Okay, let's just move on. I'm going to use this one. This is, ah, oh, there it is. Hiding. There she is. This is the only one I use for my, hi Tori, hi Kim, hey John, Angela, Heather, good to see you, it's been so long. Hi Misty, you're sweet and so beautiful yourself. Um, hi Charlotte. Okay, so I'm going to take the tapered face brush and our pressed powder. This is called Perfect Press Powder. And I'm going to dig into it just a little bit. I'm going to sweep it very gently under my eyes and then use what's left over on the rest of my face. Don't make this harder than it is, y'all. Just sweep. Start here, start here. It doesn't really matter. Just get it on there. I say it doesn't matter as long as you're using the right tool. If you're using a scratchy brush that your cat has been chewing on, it might make a difference. Okay, I'm going to get my picture back up over here. And let's see what's next. Okay, so we've got not a lot of shimmer and um, glow going on. It's a pretty matte look. Um, so I'm gonna put some bronzer on. This is our perfect bronzer. We only have one because it's the right color for everyone. Right underneath the uh, cheekbone. Temple, hairline. Underneath the cheekbone, temple, hairline. All right, and I'm gonna squeeze. I've got a little bit of product on there. You can see that light brown. That's gonna go right on the side of the nose. Squeeze, little bit of product, and right down the side of the nose. Don't follow your nose out like this. Go right down over the top of the bulb of the nose. All right, she's got quite a bit more shading here in this photo anyway. And picking a photo like this to do your makeup with is such a great way to learn 
things that work for your face and things that don't. Um, it's a great idea, like normally I don't shade extra right here on my temple, but maybe it's like the magic piece of the puzzle that I've been missing my whole life, who knows? If I don't like it, I can just take my brush that I use for foundation and just blend it out. That is the magic of Limelight products. They blend, they blend and they blend and they blend and they blend some more. But you don't need to blend your foundation away. You need to leave it visible. Sorry, I'm a little washy. Um, okay, a little washed out. That's what I meant, washy. It's a lingo, you know, makeup artist lingo. Um, okay, so eyes. I am going to use one of the best, the best colors ever. And it's actually not an eyeshadow. What? It is our number one blush. And I don't know the name of it. I just know the number and it's number one. Um, and it's kind of a mauve color. It does not have any shimmer to it and you're going to love it. And if it's part of your beautiful, like, I don't know if y'all saw my post about this, but this will make you so happy. This right here, even if there's like three colors you never use, just having it alive. Thank you, Nicole. Um, just having this will make you, well, it just, you could get off your Prozac basically if you, if you buy this instead. I'm not a doctor. All right, um, angled shadow brush, number one blush. We're gonna go pretty gentle on this and build it up to just the right shade. It is a very pretty kind of sheer mauve color. And this look that she has is very safe. It's not heavy or scary in any way. So we're gonna try to recreate that. So how beautiful is that? This color is perfect on any color of eyes. Brushing it, there's no secret here. I'm not even using my number 11 to pack it on because this one doesn't have quite as much pigment as our eyeshadows and so it's almost foolproof. You, you, you would really have a hard time screwing this up. Hi, Stacy Brown. Hi, Lisa. Oh, Nicole, you're sweet. I don't have any genius tricks. I just steal all these from everybody else. Okay, so we got that. Now we need sort of a neutral color in the crease. And for that, I'm going to use number 40, which is taupe for the best. <laughs> Can never get enough of puns. All right. Any flat milk chocolatey colored brown would work just fine. Now, see the difference? I mean, like that is some serious pigment. That's just one tiny little touch. So I got to spend some time blending this out. Now when I'm doing a really heavy look, I might lay on the black and then lay on the brown and then go back and blend them together. But with a softer look like this, we can get the job done just kind of as we go along and we don't really have to go back. This is one of, this should be one of those 10, 15 minute makeup jobs. If you're using the right tools and if you're using the right light and if you're using the right makeup. If you're standing over your bathroom counter, slapping at your face, really, if you're doing that, please stop. Please stop. Don't let your children, don't pass, don't pass that along. Don't let your children see you do that. All right, so this is the big fat round, I don't know what this brush is, but I love it and it feels oh so delicious. All right, so now I feel like that brown has muddied my color just a tad. So I'm gonna go back in with this brush and the number one blush and boost that mauve color just a little bit more. When you're applying makeup onto makeup, you want a very soft touch. You gotta use a little bit more finesse you want it to sit on top of something else 
makeup right onto your skin, you can be just a little bit more forceful because you want to kind of push it in. All right, that's pretty good. Now we're going to do the brow bone and it doesn't really matter what brush you use, but I like I like having my full brush set, 15 brushes, um, so that I can keep some of them really pure. This one I never use on anything except for the face powder. This one I like to reserve specifically for number 41. Pastel me about it so that the color is never muddied. And we're just gonna clean up that brow bone. Hers is a little bit more yellow, but I like this pink color. All right, fine. I'm gonna go back over it with a little bit of pineapple of my eye. Just to give a little more authenticity to those of you who are like, it's too pink. I know there's at least one of you thinking that. And this is gonna do a pretty good job of taming um, your crease color. If it got away from you at all, don't freak out. Just make progress, keep moving along. Yeah, that's a little bit more accurate. And that color that we did in the crease should almost disappear at this point. Um, in her picture, they have photoshopped um, basically a line highlighting her crease. Um, I'm not gonna do that, but if you wanted that look, I would take this brush and add just a little bit of brown right here. I have plenty of a natural crease, um, so I don't need to highlight that at all. You can see I got it just a little, I did just a little bit there. I mean, y'all barely touched it, barely. All right, but this is not the fun part. The fun part is the bottom. Okay, so she's got that. Now I need my number 11 brush. We're gonna pack it on, go back into the number uh, one blush, this maroon mauve color. And I'm not gonna focus too much on um, the inside membrane, because we're gonna do something else with that. But I am gonna bring this down quite a bit more than what you've probably ever done before. We're gonna get a little bit scary with it. I mean, we're just going into scary places. It's not gonna look scary. But you're gonna be like, oh my God, it's all the way down to my cheeks. No, it's not. Stop being so dramatic. Try it. You might like it. All right, so we've got that layered on. That's kind of our red color. Now, if we left that there, I think we would risk having kind of a bloodshot vampire look. So I'm gonna go back in with some number 40, just touch, touch, and I'm gonna scrub that in right at the lash line. Layering is good. If you've ever painted a picture or you're any kind of artist, you know that layers upon layers is what really makes things look magical. Their makeup is no different. If you're decorating, if you're painting, if you're cooking, layers are magic. There. Now we have kind of a brown look under the eyes. And now we're going to tight line. Put all my brushes away so I know what I'm doing, where they're going. See how responsible I am? By the way, my husband is out of town. And so are all of the children. I'm here alone with my dog. My mean dogs and my guns to any creeps who are watching this. No, seriously, you would never find me. I'm in the middle of flipping nowhere. All right, tight lining over here, boss. My three-year-old Drew is totally fascinated with your live video. <laughs> Hi, Drew. Tell your mommy to buy you some. This is the greatest tool for three-year-olds right here because you can draw the most amazing tattoos all over them. Yeah. Layers are life. Yeah, Jordan would know. Have y'all seen the pictures of what she just created? Talk about some flipping layers, man. Okay, tight lining. I'm gonna go up here. This is our uh, liquid liner. Pen, no crust, 
totally waterproof. Gets in your eye and only burns a little bit. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay, no matter how much you do this, well, I'm actually much better at it in a real mirror. Maybe I should just come over here and do the real mirror instead of trying to look at my phone. Is that not helpful to y'all? As you age, this membrane starts to hang down. And it creates a little bit of competition. And when you fill it in with a color, it doesn't have to be black but because your mascara is going to be black, because there's no such thing as brown mascara. Um, it, it makes your pupil look more obvious. Okay, so I'm going back to my picture just to see if I'm missing any little details. She's got a little bit of that. I don't know what that is, but we'll fix it. A little bit of this on the outside right here. And maybe just a hair. Right there. Don't worry about this stopping abruptly right here. We're going to fix that. Okay. Woo, that's intense. Very, very, very nerve-wracking. Okay, um, now, the mermaid, the mermaid makeup. This is not mermaid makeup. Oh my gosh, she's gonna be so mad if she's watching right now, and I'm not really doing mermaid makeup. Okay, she's not watching. Maybe she'll never know. I am gonna do a full mermaid look someday, but I really feel like I need to have blue hair before I do that, and I don't have a blue wig yet, so. It's just gonna have to wait. Okay, this brush, this little guy right here, this is a bent liner brush, and this is some mermaid shimmer powder collected from, it's actually made from the eye pookie of real mermaids. They just freeze dry, okay, that's not true. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of our setting powder on the brush, just spray the brush. And then I'm just gonna pick up what's in the lid. And then tap it off. And I'm going to line the inside, the inside two thirds, okay? I did the black this last third, so now I'm gonna do and this stuff is dangerous. Layer this on gently because you don't want it all over your cheeks. All right. Now that doesn't look quite obvious enough to me, so we're gonna just add a little bit more. Layers, layers. And then I'm going to scoot it down into the lashes and I'm focusing the bulk of this product right underneath my iris. All right, you'll see that totally different from this one over here. It's a completely different look. layer this on on the membrane it's gonna get in your eye a little bit and make your eye feel a little bit dry it'll work its way to the corner and you'll be okay there we go and then she's got just a smidgy bit go back in with the setting spray on the top Kind of as a little bit of a liner just right over the iris. It's not a full line, it's just like a hint.
There we go. We may go back and add to that, but I think that that is a pretty even amount of sheen coming off of both, and that's a little bit more important than really being able to see it. So the whole point of all of this is that the more light bouncing off of your face, the more your eyes, the, the brighter and more light uh, reflective your eyes appear. So they are more inviting because they're reflecting so much light. Hope that makes sense. Um, now we gotta do something with these brows, y'all. Put this brush away and let's get out our lovely brow tamer. Brow tamer, brow tamer, wherefore art thou, brow tamer? Here it is, brow tamer, otherwise known as the cheese cutter. I'm gonna put this blue stuff away before I stick my finger in it and get it all over my cheeks. Ask me how many times that's happened. All right, you can see my um, fingers resting on my face right here have caused a little bit of discoloration. That could be my fingers or it could be the wine. It's hard to tell, but we're gonna fix it later. And I'm gonna take my concealer brush and try to get rid of whatever that little spot was right there. Um, when you're erasing mistakes, always go toward the nose. And that's what this brush is for, it's an eraser. All right, setting spray on to this end of the brush. And I'm gonna use number 40, Taupe for the Bust. And I'm gonna brush my brows down first. And I'm gonna make a line on the top. I'm gonna fudge my line a little bit there. Hers are pretty thin, they're not super thick, so maybe we'll go a little shy on the bottom. Then brush all the hairs back up. And we're gonna stay on the slim side. Keep some slim, shady brows. And then I'm just gonna kinda go fill in. This color is very forgiving. You can add more of it to make it darker you can put it on really lightly. You can just kind of wipe it off. But what you're looking for is some depth right here in the front, but not too much thickness. A natural brow is thinner right here than it is here. So you want to keep the thickness here. And then we're going to use the spoolie end to go back and kind of brush them up. You can go as far, if y'all have seen my like 20, I think it's 12 steps, I should stop exaggerating. My 12 step brow process. Ooh, probably have some blue on that. Let's clean it up. You can go back in and kind of add some darker shades to give a little bit more dimension and make them look super natural. You can spend a lot of time on your brows and it will not be wasted time. I think Churchill said, any hour of life spent on the back of a horse is not wasted. I'm saying any 28 minutes spent on your brows is not wasted. That's right. Somebody write that shit down. Okay, spray again, back into number 40. Totally fudging where they really are. All right, brush it back up back in, follow this line, and if you're thinking to yourself, self, she doesn't really look like she even knows what she's doing, she's just slapping at her brows, you're right, I don't, but this stuff is really forgiving, it's, it's just such a perfect shade for, like, I use it on everyone, I I can only, my daughter, I use a darker shade, but for everyone else, I use this color. 
and it works. All right. And yes, they could always be better. But since I'm just going to be taking this off and going to bed, after I watch a couple episodes of Santa Clarita Diet, because <laughs> it's stupid <laughs> and awesome, um, then I will take this off and go to bed. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Now I am going to go back though and carve it up. She's got quite a sexy little arch going on in this picture. So I'm going to put a little bit more concealer on this concealer brush and I'm going to carve right here and just clean this up and give myself that skinny little arch that she has. And I can go back in with my bent liner brush and add wherever I may need to go back and add. All right, it's a subtle difference, but it's there. Basically, you're gonna be, you're, you're highlighting and covering any hairs that would be diffusing the light and keeping it from bouncing kind of in, more perfectly right off of that um, brow bone arch right there. Because this is the highest point right here of your bone and so that's where the light should kind of be bouncing from. And you're just sort of helping that along. All right, so. Now let's clean this up here. I got a little bit ruddy and red. So I'm gonna go back in with my foundation brush and a tiny bit of the lighter foundation mixed with a tiny bit. I'm just bouncing back and forth between the foundation and the concealer. I mean, it's the smallest amount of product. Hi, Charlotte, hi, Gina. Cheryl, hello. Lee, hello. Rebecca White, hey girl. Okay. Oh, thank you for saying I'm entertaining. I, <laughs> I mean, my goal is really just to entertain myself, but if I can bring y'all along with me, awesome. All right, you just gotta keep working at it patiently, patiently. And then remember that your setting powder is going to do a lot of the work for you of perfecting things. So right about the time you start to get frustrated, like, ugh, it's never gonna look perfect. Remember that you're the only one looking at that one particular spot on your face. And now I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of our number six blush and add a little bit um, because that is going to just further create a veil. Now back into the bronzer to go back over what I just erased. And I did not do blush yet, so her blush in this picture is very minimal. I'm just going to kind of put a little bit right on top of where the bronzer is. All right, so let's get some mascara and some lips in here. Seriously, y'all, don't spend too much time analyzing little details on your face. No one else is going to do that but you, and you will like yourself so much better if you just learn to look into your own eyes and see what other people see. And don't forget to check out your profile. It's super awesome. All right, find the tips first. And find the other tips. See that little ma mascara that I just got there? What do we do with it? Anyone know? Anyone know? What, it, what should I do? What should I do? Should I wipe it off? Nope. Nope. Let it dry. 
and it'll pop right off with your magic eraser brush. Okay, so I found the tips. Now I'm gonna go back and start at the base. You should be doing this sitting back with a mirror, hand mirror in your hand, but that doesn't work for video. So just trust me and do as I say, not as I do. Okay. World's best mascara. I used L'Oreal Voluminous for years and years and years. And Dior has a great one. Lancome has a great one. But here's the thing. They're great. They're not better. And they're more expensive. So why, why, why would you do that? Because you like to go to Neiman's and buy shit. And $20 is about all you can afford to spend. Sorry, I have children watching. I should say shiplap instead. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be makeup artists. That reminds me of this funny story. One time I was doing a lesson for a 14 year old girl who, um, her, like it was for her birthday and her mom had told her when she was 14 she could start wearing makeup. So um, she didn't have any idea of, like, of, I mean, she didn't have any bad habits. She had never put a stitch of makeup on. It's the moth. It's back. Um, so she is just kicking butt. Like, everything I'm doing, she's doing it perfectly because she's got no bad habits. And... At the end of the whole thing, I'm like, girl, you are incredible. Like, I don't know what you want to be when you grow up, but you could, you could seriously be a makeup artist. Like, you're so good at this. And she was like, oh, well, I'm going to be an astronaut or a doctor. It's like, oh, well, you know, <laughs> that doesn't work out for you. Could always fall back on this little gig. Okay, very little on the bottom. These little bottom baby lashes don't need much. I'm just pulling a little bit off of the brush and just painting them. We've got a little bit sticking over there. And now that my little mistake has dried, I can easily go in. Always keep a towel handy at your vanity. Um, I can easily go in now with my eraser and just, remember we go toward the nose, which that's a little sticky, so we're gonna go up. There we go. And you've got all those powders on there, so unless you really jammed it through all those layers, it's probably just sitting there and can easily be plucked right off. But it has to be dry first, otherwise you just end up smearing it everywhere. Okay, so nude liner. I am loving this look. What do y'all think? It's so pretty. So soft. But I, you don't see soft with color very often. All right, so sharpen this baby a little bit. practically not there, right? I just erased my lips. That's okay. That's totally the point. Why would I want to erase my lips? Because I'm going to put them where I want them. I'm going to give myself the lips that I would have had if Eve hadn't sinned. Okay. Not telling the name of this color. I'm not telling. Not telling. That's the name. Okay, lip brush, always going to get a better finish with a lip brush. Okay, 
go right over the liner turn your brush and use every angle of it a really good lip brush is going to be nice and tight and give you an absolutely perfect line This is the perfect nude. We don't need 15 shades of nude because we developed the perfect nude. It really does look so different on so many different people, but somehow perfect. Now, this is one of our regular lipsticks. It feels like chapstick. Um, and I absolutely love it, but it's not quite as long wearing as our enduring lip colors, the ones that come in one of these tubes. So you can go in with your setting powder, white setting powder, it's called Perfect Press Powder. and dab very gently. You don't want that lipstick on this brush. And then I'm going to use a different brush. Very, very gently dust that off. So gentle, so gentle. Kind of let that dry a little bit. The more layers of pressed powder, the longer it's going to wear, but you risk um, it starting to look a little bit cakey, so you don't want to overdo it. And then I'm going to use a gloss. I think she has a gloss on over that. Don't y'all think so? I'm going to use Faith. This one has just sort of, it's sort of a darker nude, um, kind of like macaroon, if any of y'all have that color. But you can adjust your lip color a little bit depending on what the not telling does to your face. Um, some of you, you're going to think it's kind of a dark nude and some of you it's going to just seem too light. So you can gloss over that and adjust. I'm just giving myself this little top line right there. You see how much light is bouncing off of the little cupid's bow right there? And then I'm just kind of putting a thin layer on the bottom right there. Please don't take this thing out with all this sloppy goo and start slapping it on your pretty lips. That's not going to do you any favors. Um, okay, so that is pretty much it. I am going to set this with a setting spray. It's called 10 Years Younger Setting Spray because it's going to take away all of the well, not all of these, like it makes it sound like there's a lot, but any chalky um, finish that you have, it's going to give you that dewy effect back, and it's also going to make it last and last and last and last until tomorrow. Seriously. Did y'all see that video where I slept in it and wore it the next day? It can happen. Okay, I'm going to take a picture and put myself up next to Charlize Theron, which if that's not like pretty much the bravest thing in the world, maybe the dumbest thing in the world, um, I don't know what it is. So I'd love to hear from you what you think is really brave, but I'm about to put my face right up next to hers. Look out, Charlize. Thanks for watching, guys.